Hi everyone, I'm Deborah Rogers. Um, I live in Ukiah, California, and I worked for peer support for actually almost 17 years until our peer wellness center actually closed down on March 10th of 2023. So I just got a job at Family Tapestry Services for Behavioral Health. They serve children and adults. And so I'm here to kind of share our challenges um, here up north living in rural communities. Um, kind of talk about the, the benefits and also the challenges of living in a rural community. And some of the benefits though are is we get to share our lived experience and that helps build trust and rapport naturally with peers they've actually responded with relief that they can be themselves and process their journey of healing at their own pace and we act peers have a unique position to advocate empower and assist the stakeholders to include peers in the decision-making process, which is really important. There was a saying, nothing about us without us, was the theme from our forerunners, the disabilities rights movement, who dared to stand up to the traditions of forced treatment. Peer workers are vital to a much needed reform of mental health services. And my belief is really going back to the basics meeting people right where they're at, honoring the person right where they're at, letting them choose their healing path of choice. Um, and we do have that unique privilege um, to use peer strengths to build upon, which gives peers the confidence that their voice does matter and they get to choose their own modalities and convey the decision-making process with chosen providers. Another benefit, having a lived experience, recovery is possible. It gives us hope to other peers who may be struggling. And the fact that um, once we share our stories with others, people who've never identified before in the workforce actually feel safe enough to share. Um, and there's a lot of opportunities for peers where they didn't know that they had choices and options and that they belong at the table as well. Um, and actually, our Mendocino County, that's where the community I'm from, our county has always invited the peers to the table to help with the decision making process. Um, Unfortunately, there's we could use more peers to um, to step up. I also sit on the board of NAMI as a peer, so um, it's I'm hoping to get more volunteers um, to be able to to come out and use their strengths as well. Uh, let's see. And I also did a, just a little bit of research of um, peers in the work, workplace. And it says, <clears throat> excuse me, evidence of peers in the workforce have confirmed the efficacy of peer strengths that adds a layer of assistance as part of a multidisciplinary treatment team or actually an alternative to conventional treatments. Strength-based opportunities in the workforce helps break the stigma of disability oppression. Any thoughts or about that or anything to add? I'm hoping Samantha, um, my peer in Willits, they're 30 miles further up, um, is supposed to join us today. So I was hoping Samantha would be on here as well. And then some of the, there's still a lot of challenges around stigma. Um, we do have a high level of stigma and discrimination still surrounding mental health in our rural and remote areas. And the desperately low level of homegrown mental health personnel who know the local people 
their customs, um, their language, and their land could even be rectified by the employment of care workers. We actually live in uh, uh, prevalent Native communities where we want to honor their, their beliefs and their values and to honor what works for them. Uh, we also we actually have a really nice diverse group of communities up here, and I think it's important for them. The challenges for some of them is their own family stigmas of you don't go outside of your circle, um, and so and self stigmatics. Excuse me self-stigmatization on their own selves, I found is a challenge, but I also recognize too, once you actually give someone the space to sit, a safe space to sit and share um, and build that trust in me for, they'll start trusting you and open up and allow you to, to come in and work with them. As a matter of fact, through NAMI, we have the NAMI's National Alliance on Mental Illness. And we have actually, as peers, have been invited to bring in a, um, a rap group. And that's a real honor to be asked by the tribes to, to allow us in um, to share our knowledge. And we like to get together and do ceremonies with them and learn about their culture and um, so yeah, that's a real honor. And, you know, they've also shared that they have a lot of healing to do as well. And it's it's really a joy to kind of stand in the gap and, and to just honor each person where they're at. There's still a huge stigma of mental health and addictions here. Um, our county actually has marijuana stores literally on every corner and Ukiah is only seven miles long from north to south so um yeah it's it's really caused a lot of um increased substance use amongst our teens um easily accessible the alcohol the drugs we're having a lot of fentanyl overdoses to where we're actually carrying um, Narcan with us. We were trained to where if we're out in the community that if we find someone in trouble, we can be that, that uh, intervention while we're calling 911. Um, and our county still it is, they actually um, have some job opportunities available for the county, but there's still that stigma of low wage, um, a, a wage to where they can, you know, really have a, have a nice life, be able to take care of their needs, their families. Um, but we also do have a super dedicated, a lot of people in this community. Um, the other challenge is high care loads, um, a lot of turnover, and that, and I think what's kind of what what's really kind of cool for me is just getting in there and doing the work, just being natural and just honoring the person right where they're at and watching them bloom and grow at their own pace. And the other providers take notice and see that my whole goal is for to break that stigma and to for people to see we all matter we all have something to offer our communities um, transportation is a huge issue especially the further north um, a lot of people live up in the mountains pretty far from treatments um, our, or maybe that not knowing where to go, what is available. And, and so we're big on trying to get the word out that 
that there is help and through share actually i just got through training with share i had a wonderful experience um for the peer medical certification program and i was really impressed how how well everyone worked together and i thought oh if i could just scoop up that you know all of them that model and bring them all here but it was very inspirational to see what a well-oiled machine for uh, you know being in los angeles county we actually had the privilege to get flown in for for the weekend so we could experience being together in the community so it gave me a lot of hope that if a big city you know can show that this works that it may take us a little longer. Um, but yeah, there's still a lot of work to be done. And I'm pretty hopeful that people can heal one person at a time on what works for them. I kind of made some little notes here. Uh, what else? Oh, communication breakdowns. There appears to sometimes uh, we find there's miscommunications and so we're working really um, diligently to continue to uh, involve uh, our policy makers to involve our legislature. We had the opportunity uh, through Campro just last year to go to Sacramento and be able to speak on behalf of um, changing the way delivery of services. And um, yeah, it's, and of course we know when COVID hit, it, it, um, it caused a lot of uh, workers to work from home, so they're not, they weren't getting out. But we stayed out in the community. We stayed in the offices. We kept our buildings open. We just put in a screening process. Um, but we're always looking for outreach opportunities. We're going to be going to the Hoplin tribe on Friday um, for child abuse. Um, awareness month and to wrap around the families and let them know that support is there for the family for the children um, lots of opportunities for to socialize and to just be transparent and to be you know open honest direct and respectful and uh, yeah that's, but yeah, my, my goal too is to try to look for more peer involvement. Um, I did get a call from the county saying that they were, they, they said they were working on a special project. So I'm going to stay tuned to wait to see what that is, but it does have to do with peer employment. And so I'm pretty excited about that. Which county are you with, Deborah? Sorry. Oh, no worries. Mendocino County. Oh, okay, so we're like neighbors. I'm in Lake County. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Thank I you. started with Kevin Murphy at a healing cooperative 17 years ago, and we all met over. We went over to Lake County and had a picnic, and it was really wonderful. Nice. The other peers there. Uh, actually, it would have been 17 years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Long time ago. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you for sharing. And then I have Shanna right here um, yeah. next, you know, to talk about, you know, your work that you, you know, in your neighborhood, in your county, see where you're at. So take it away, please, Shannon. Right on. Hello, everybody. My name is Shannon McConnell. And uh, I actually did peer certification in 2018 with Contra Costa County, but I was unable to grandfather in and I'm now living in Shasta County in Redding, California, and I will be complete with my peer certification uh, 
next week, I believe, with Libby with Share. And uh, some of the benefits of living and uh, working and being a part of a rural community up here in, in Redding, California, is, you know, there's definitely less congestion when it comes to traffic. Um, it's more of a laid back lifestyle, better, you know, population. There's not as much competition when it comes to housing, cheaper costs of living. Um, you know, the community is a lot more close knit. So when it comes to working with, you know, our, our peers, the the relationships are, are not only are they authentic, but they're more rich, I would say. Um, of course, less, less stress uh, because of that reason, it, it being more of a laid back lifestyle. Um, you know, of course, we're, we're three and a half hours from some of the major, major cities, um, the Bay Area, maybe about two and a half from Sacramento. Um, you know, there's a lot, lots of waterfalls and very therapeutic nature areas that people can go to. Um, rumor has it that a uh, there's an equine uh, facility that is looking to garner some some funds, I think, from the state to uh, start some equine therapy up here. So that and they're looking to hopefully hire some peers. I'm not sure how big of a production it's going to be, but that sounds very exciting, I would say. Um, of course, some of the challenges would be, you know, there's less resources. It's unfortunate, but one of the main uh, staple places that people would go to for psychiatric, you know, care, therapy, as well as doctors is no longer going to be accepting Medi-Cal or what's known as partnership up here. So uh, I'm not sure when that has, if it's gone into effect yet, but it was definitely said to happen in the near future. Um, another entity, they're, they're doing great things. They're really growing. Uh, they, they received a, a pretty hefty grant to, um, to take a harm reduction approach, but they were supposed to hire like three to four peers and they've only hired one so far. And uh, rumor has it that uh, they're not really sure what direction to point that particular peer in uh, because they've never had a peer at their facility before. Um, I have seen quite a few uh, peer jobs in the last two years that I've lived here um, for Shasta County itself. Um, but, you know, there's less entertainment here. Uh, there's a lot of turnover with, with doctors and therapists. Um, a lot of people kind of want to move out of the area, work remote. And then there's the issue with some people still like to see their doctors and therapists in person and not do the whole Zoom setup. Um, lots of canceled appointments, um, yeah. not as progressive as maybe the Bay Area or L.A. or Sacramento or something like that, um, due to the fact that there is not as many extracurricular activities. You see a lot more teen pregnancy um, and drugs um, as being some of the extracurricular stuff that, you know, the young youngins <laughs> do. Um, of course, not as many high paying jobs. That is also, I think, an issue that Deborah mentioned um, you you want to be passionate, and many people who are in this line of work are passionate about it due to their lived experience, and they, they want to be authentic and support, but uh, they need to sustain themselves as well. Um, let's see. Um, I think one of the, the final questions was, uh, you know, how what is the best way to um, gain resources in a rural area? And definitely networking, um, you know, social networking. Um, you can just do self-help yourself. Um, of course, just, you know, try to go to the, like I go to an assisted outpatient treatment that I'm going to be doing my internship at. And they have a lot of not only uh, in-person groups, but Zoom stuff as well. And um, uh, another one of the challenges, going back to one of the challenges, there's a, there's a large uh, homeless population here. Um, Big reason why is that one of the local prisons outside the area, when people are released, they bus them over here and a lot of people don't have anywhere to live. So they're immediately homeless at that point. So that's that's a little frustrating, um, you know. And then, of course, there's there's the, the strictness when it comes to people setting up their encampments. They, they're not able to stay that long because the police will say, hey, time to move on out, pack it up and get going. Um, then there's the stigma uh, with people who are unhoused and also just anybody who's had mental health issues, of course, like anywhere else. But um, 
you know, it's just, it's frustrating because a lot of times people look down upon when you begin to, I don't know, give somebody who's unhoused a sandwich or, or something. And there's not that many uh, shelters here for the unhoused to go to. So I'm not sure if anybody has any questions. I, I think I covered everything that I, that I put on my list. Um, so. <laughs> I can add a little about because housing was one of the big things I did, but it just, you know, any I loved outreach. I love outreach, outreaching and finding the unhoused. And I don't know about Shasta County, but I found these last three years, especially when COVID, housing money just poured in. I had found out that actually every community, uh, Every county actually has to have a certain percentage of subsidized housing for lower income. And our own county was out of compliance and our own legal aid actually had to literally sue the county to get in compliance. And so within the last five years, we've gotten one, two, three, four, like five big housing projects and money was just, well, I sat on the um, continuum of care for housing, actually for probably 20 years to help people get housing. So I worked really close and well with the housing voucher, the Community Development Commission, the housing voucher people here in Mendocino County. And so it, it was a lot of money was pouring in um, and a lot of work had to be done to liaison on to break that stigma of housing the unhoused. And I actually, there was a wonderful, um, just, I, when I'm driving, I'll look around looking for housing and I watched, I no, saw I this build, yeah, you know, no. a building construction no. site. So I just know to just take a picture to check into it and follow up. And then, the actual head construction man saw me do that and it came up all like, what are you doing? And so that was my opportunity to like do my thing and, and tell him what I do and how, and it was the best connection ever. He connected me with the Lake County lady and, and it was amazing that about every person that came and applied for those housings, they come for support and get them in coordinated entry and you know all these all these you know steps to do. But people, I was really concerned about getting you know like would they pass the you know background checks and all that. Everyone caught in, and there, we still need more, but. Um, so that was success. However, uh, we still get high turnover. If we don't have a landlord open to working with us, but it, you know, like sometimes we have to remind them of the laws because they may not know sometimes. And, um, but we have had a good success rate getting people housed. However, we still have a huge amount of unhoused people. We still have a long ways to go. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a really beautiful thing to see. I mean, their, their reactions is, I never had my own place before. And they said it even felt a little odd, but it was a nice, really great. We have some really good landlords and a couple of them who are supportive. If we need to set them up with in-home health support, things like that. Um, but yeah, that's been one really good thing. However, the homeless shelter, we do have a homeless shelter here in Ukiah. And, uh, but sometimes the, one of the barriers is that, you know, they have, you have to be there at a certain time. If you don't show up at a certain time, you lose your bed. Um, so there's still, you know, everything has a process to it. So I just try to learn what is the protocol and process for, to try to get somebody in another grant came in um, through a treatment center that can put someone in a hotel for two weeks in term, as well as 
using the county sources. So, yeah. Uh, Deborah, you actually remind me of a, of a particular entity, the one that I mentioned received a large grant from, from the state that um, they, they actually opened a, um, a, they built a few apartment complexes for the transitional aged youth. Nice. And I thought that was really fascinating. And, you know, what a great time frame to kind of put that in motion as, 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 you know, the young kids are really kind of stepping out into the world and, and yeah. finding their way and, and are in need of, of stability and support. And I, I think that's, I think that's wonderful. Um, I think I also forgot to mention, um, it's not as diverse up here. You know, we, I personally, I love learning from all the many beautiful, amazing cultures in the world. I love mm -hmm. tasting all kinds of foods and yeah. I get excited when I find a new restaurant from a different culture, a different mm -hmm. food I can taste. So considering the housing market is cheap, if anybody knows anybody who wants to move to a cheaper place to live and you have a diverse <laughs> culture background or even not come up to Redding, California, we'd love to have you. Oh, I love Redding. <laughs> <laughs> It was Redding not thank diverse. Um, thank you so much. And then I I'm have, sorry. Thank you so oh, much. Sorry. For sharing. Thank yes. you so much. Yes. And then I have. Uh, I hope that I pronounce your name correct. If not, please forgive me. Tajia. Sorry, I always forget that part. Thank you. Hi, my name is Taja. Hello. I'm so sorry. Yeah. No, no problem. No problem. It's tricky. My parents are weird. <laughs> Hi, everyone. It's so nice to be in How this of beautiful yeah. people. Thank you so much for having me. Um, my name is Taja. I work in Mono County for Mono County Behavioral Health. We are also a, considered a frontier county. We have less than 13,000 people. And an enormous expanse of land. And so um, peer services is something new. I'm the first one in our department to get certified and uh, we will be able to like roll out peer support services in July, I think is what the state said. And um, we have another, uh, another coworker who is going through the classes right now. Um, and currently my job is kind of, still in the peer realm and I support recovery and hold groups. I hold um, sobriety groups for teens and safe spaces for youngsters. And we do, um, my, my main focus of study is trauma. And so I do, um, or I'm sorry, trauma and how it affects the body. And um, I offer trauma yoga classes and meditation and things like this. And, um, and I do similar work in the schools. And um, I'm just so grateful to have the opportunity to be able to um, survive and then learn and thrive and be able to help and educate others to do the same. Um, I, I, <laughs> it gives me a little bit of tears. I'm just so grateful to be here, you guys. I don't even remember what the question is, and I'm rambling. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Deborah and Sharon. Do you do, do you guys have the questions? Uh, so the first one is: What are the benefits of living and working as a peer in a rural area? The second one would be: What are the challenges? And how? And the third one is: How can peers? Um, gather or network regarding gaining resources in a rural area? Okay. Uh-oh. I have to do this quickly because I have to go get ready for the next group. Um, can you please repeat the first question for me? What are the benefits of living and working as a peer in a rural area? All right. Excellent. Thank you. The benefits of living and working in a rural area so in my town, we have about 300 people and they're seasonal. Um, our winters here are ridiculous and um, substance use is a really big thing here. It's a really big problem. It's a really big issue. And being rural doesn't offer the ability to just jump out and seek help. And so I think that having peer nearby, a peer reference nearby, um, is a huge benefit in that I, I normally don't wear a suit jacket. I'm super approachable. I'm everybody's friend. 
and of all of the other peers that I've met, it's the same personality, right? We all have this certain personality. And that, um, I think, is a safe space for people to connect and share and learn and grow. And it offers a safe space for rehabilitation to heal. And um, I think in the city, you know, you go to the social services office, you go to the big offices, and then you you find your way there. Whereas um, having that option, it's just not an option here. Um, you know, my Trader Joe's is two and a half hours away. <laughs> it's just super not an option. <laughs> and, um, and so the difficulties in that would be, um, well, take this winter, for example, we were isolated we had avalanches on two sides of us and then the highway washed out on the third side so of our three exits they were all blocked um that took three weeks we were in a state of emergency running the emergency shelter we had no power no water no no resources no nothing but we had Zoom for some points, <laughs> and in Zoom, of course, we can jump on and link to other um, recovery groups, but then the Wi-Fi is out, and so having uh, peer support through crisis, I think, is just really beneficial, but also being remote doesn't always ensure that you'll have access to all of the things that you would hope for. Um, but that's kind of the appeal too, right? I think that <laughs> we maybe kind of like the isolation or something, there's something to it, right? Um, okay, difficulties, it's hard to reach people. It's hard to get people to, um, it's pretty public. Like if, if you're hanging out with me, like we're talking about stuff and people know that and I think that being in a small community and like holding the secrets of a whole town is intense when they're all your friends <laughs> and they can get pretty heavy. Um, like I, I, I think that being rural and small really lends difficulty to um, boundaries and protecting the self because you get really invested, there are your people. But I guess really that probably happens in a big place too. I don't know, why wouldn't it, right? Um, I guess the thing here is I can't just blend in. Like, <laughs> I, you know, we, we all know each other. There's no hiding from anything. And, and that's kind of difficult. Um, I have a lady who called, she's a business owner here and um, is part of one of my programs, but had to fire a couple of employees who are also part of my programs and said, you know, Taj, I just don't think that I can come. I don't think I can be in the same space. That's freaking difficult for me because now I'm like this is a, a one horse town, you know, <laughs> like if she doesn't feel comfortable to come because these other people are here, there's not another option for her to go somewhere else. Also a difficulty. Um, when the wind blows, the Wi-Fi goes out, also a difficulty. All right, what's the next question? Uh, how can peers uh, network or gather and gain resources in a rural area? Okay, like peer networking and resourcing or just, just information resources? I think it's amongst peers. Okay. I think that, um, like, I keep kicking myself in the butt for not showing up to the Monday share peer class group that keeps meeting up um, because I think that's a really great way to network. I think meetings like this where there's all of these like-minded workers um, to be able to connect and share, like, this is what works. This isn't working for me. How are you? networking, how, what are you doing to get the word out? Um, I want to hear all of that stuff. I want to love that up big time. And I 
personally am super down to like sit in front of another Zoom meeting to gather resources like that. <laughs> thank, you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank no, you so much. No, thank you, thank you. I know that I know that you have another another presentation that you you know you you're rushing toward. But before you go, uh, anybody have any questions? You know, for Tadra before she she go elsewhere. Jane, I see your hands up. Yeah. Uh, thank you. I missed most of your presentation. I got a question. When the meetings are conducted online in the room meeting, basically anyone can dial in. Um, how to um, protect privacy? Because most of the stuff we're talking about in the meeting are very personal and you really don't know who's listening. How I can answer you... that. Um, I, from the recovery groups, from any meeting where I feel like I would like to remain anonymous or protect anybody else's anonymity, you can um, just request, like go to the top of your picture and push the three dots and under rename, you can name yourself Sunflower for all I care. Um, you can welcome to turn off your screens. Um, I fully support that and also support would you like to have your name there? Would you like to put your email in the chat? Um, whatever the person feels comfortable with, their level of comfort is what's most important to me. Did that, that answer your question, Jean? Uh, partially, that's from technical point of view. From organization point of view, We'll share a law in-person meeting without uh, turning the uh, um, room or whatever recording. So, so I think, uh -huh, thank you, Jane. So I think I will be a better candidate to answer this question. Yes, thank you. Here. And we are, we are, you know, our meeting rooms are set up as hybrid, meaning that, you know, we do have a projector camera. And like, you know, like Taja said, you know, the group, you know, what is this? The group stays in the group is not an anonymity. So let's say when we do have a meeting that is hybrid, meaning that it's in person and also online via Zoom, uh, we ask the people that do not, if they don't want it to show up in the camera, they can sit off the camera. You know, they don't have to. Uh, and, 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 and there's areas that the camera's not going to, to see you. It's like a blind spot. And then, you know, like I said, because there's certain meetings that is both way, meetings that, you know, there's gonna be people coming in and then also online. And then there's certain meetings just strictly online. And, and so when you come, when you come into a group, the group has a focus. For example, I myself is a recovered alcoholic, okay? Um, so I know I not only go to AA, you know, I go to CNA and also I am mental health consumer. I suffer from, you know, uh, I've been diagnosed with major depression, bipolar anxiety. And so I do go to Recover International also and CODA, yeah, CODA to, to have a healthy boundary. And so those groups is address my behavior, my, you know, my, my anxiety level, my stress level. And so, you know, and, and, and so I go in there for one purpose only is to, you know, to, to listen to, is there a solution to my problem? Let's see, is it going to work or not going to work? And then also to continue to gain, expand my support network because um, I need to continue to, to build my contact list on my cell phone because um, it happened to me uh, feel, uh, three times that in the middle of the night, I had an uh, anxiety attack. The first time I, I had it, I thought it was a panic attack. I called 911. Didn't do much. They came, not that they did not come, they showed up. However, you know, it just like they check everything, you know, good, you know, and so it was, you know, anxiety attack. So I told myself the second time when it happened, I knew what I need to do. I need to just text people, call people, you know, and that second time I did what I did, you know, um, like I said, you know, I call first few people, it's in the middle of the night, you know, people not, you know, people not gonna pick up right away. 
And then I almost, I almost gave up and called 911. I go, no, you know, it's the same thing. I just need to continue to dial. Someone's going to pick up. And someone did. And then I have, I don't know how many people I have to, I call freaking, I don't know. I have to, like, when I vent something, like, for one thing, I have to vent it for at least freaking 15, 20 times. So that's why I need to continue to build my address book, my contact list. Otherwise, I'm going to burn out those people really quick. Because my, I'm going to rewind a little bit because in the beginning, I did not know how important it was. In the, in the beginning, in my early recovery, I only have my sponsor, my two sponsor sister. So just three of them, okay? So in the beginning, I literally call all of them. I don't know how many times a day. And then, um, you know, my sponsor sister was trying, they would be nice to me, give me like, a, like, you know, encourage me, you know, like, hey, you know, I need to get more numbers. It did not dawn on me. It did not hit me until my sponsor put her foot down like, well, check this out. You got to start getting new numbers ASAP, like yesterday. If not, I'm going to fire you. You, you, you. you need to look for a different sponsor. You're burning us out. And so I was like, whoa. I'm like, oh, oh she's giving me an ultimatum. I'm like, better hurry up and do it. Since I did not get it, the first, you know, how, who knows how many times I'm like, this is, I'm like, oh, hurry up. So I hope I answered your question, Jane. You know, I hope I didn't carry away. Um, so, you know, um, it's safe. It's safe because whatever says in the group is stays in the group. Not unless I wanted to freaking put a loudspeaker on it. So I hope I, I did not lose Jane. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Jay. And also, um, just I just wanted to relay a message that Kathy put in the chat. Um, she is also a member of the Alaska Peer Support Advisory Board. She worked at the Alaska Commission for Behavioral Health Certification, and they also certify people in peer support levels, associate and professionals one, two, and three, and traditional associates and professionals levels one, two and three. And so they also, as well as those in chemical dependency and behavioral health. And then later on, she also said that her challenge, like challenges working in a rural community in Alaska is that uh, she said, you are literally hundreds of miles from other communities. Very true. Yes. Often inaccessibly by land. Very true. You either need to fly in or boat in. Also, some communities on the North Slope have six months of winter and six months of summer. Yes. Communication can be extremely spotty and very expensive. Food, lodging. Totally agree. Very. Alaska is one expensive. I was about to say countries. <laughs> That's what it seems like to me. <laughs> it's not just a state. It's the expensive. Yes. And six months winter, six months summer, I need to get adjust to those lights and deem. So don't know how you manage, Kathy, but great work and great work, you know. And, you know, thank you for, you know, thank you for Deborah, Shannon, and Tom for sharing. Thank you so much. And Kathy too. And is there anyone else would like to, you know, thoughts, feedback? So I, Hi, this is Carrie. I, Hi, I live Carrie. in Lake County. We're superior region. We're considered rural. Um, and I, I just, so we have a lot of the same challenges, obviously, you know, um, for me, being in peer support and being in a rural community, um, one, it's beautiful. So, you know, it takes us 45 minutes to drive anywhere in this county. So, but it's pretty. Um, but what what I've seen work in you know developing resources is um, just the um, collaborating. You know, I, I think because we are a small community, we know other people that have resources. And so one thing that I learned um, during our hundred day challenge was, you know, it, it's okay to ask another agency that might have funding for something that you don't to help you, you know? And so like at our big Oak Peer Support Center, you know, it started out really slow, but now we have like a shower trailer that's there once a week. 
we have food giveaways twice a month. You know, we have somebody from social services that comes in and she does like applications for food stamps and Medi-Cal. Um, you know, if somebody needs, we have a um, outreach nurse that comes in for wound care. Um, you know, we now have an outreach van that goes out two days a week and we're working on four. Um, we're also working on getting another outreach van. And so we're going to start doing crisis response. And it's our it's our peer support people that are going to be in that van, you know, and our suicide prevention team is also going to be on it. And so it's just it's so exciting, you know, but then on the other hand, being a small county, you know, we get money for housing. Um, I, I heard you guys talking about, you know, like the emergency housing vouchers and you know, a certain amount of our housing has to be subsidized. I'm going to look into that because I don't think we're in compliance. And um, so thank you, Deborah. I, I, I've i seen all of the housing going up in Mendocino County, and I'm just like, why can't we do that? You, you know, it's like, why can't there be other, you know, subsidized housing units? But um, so that that's a challenge in that, you know, we get this money. And then it's given to like other agencies in the community that use it to staff their agency and not necessarily provide housing for people. And, and it it's, it makes me so angry, you know, and, and here I am advocating for our unhoused population and I'll be like, so is this agency going to call anybody back with this funding or are they just going to leave them hanging like they always have, you know, and, um, so that is a, a huge hindrance in providing services. And there's high turnover, you know, because like Shannon, you, you mentioned Reading and how there's nothing to do up there. And I was like, no, every time I go to Reading, I feel like I'm in a big city. <laughs> I was like, how is it? How's there nothing up there? You know, like, um, but I could see that too, you know, that, that maybe it isn't as, busy as I see it, you know, because I'm in Lakeport, you know, we we have like, I don't know, maybe 5,000 people. Um, you know, our whole county, I think, is up to 65,000, but it's spread out over, you know, mountains and around the lake, and that takes an hour and a half to go around, you know, so um, I love writing. <laughs> so, but that that's, that's, I just I wanted to share, you know, I, I, the 100 day challenge was a huge shift in the way our county thinks. And, um, you know, there was no money on the table. It was just like, OK, so this agency can do this. This one does this. How can we make this happen? It was just boots on the ground making it work. And we we met our goal. We actually, I think. Our goal was 50, we were going to house 55 people in 100 days, and I think we actually did closer to 60. So, you know, and it was just like, okay, but now where's that momentum? So, thank you guys for letting me share. <laughs> Thank you, Carrie. Wow, that's just huge. Just it, great success. That's a milestone right there. Yes, right. Yeah, and I, I think the majority of those people are still housed. So, um, I mean, I would have to look through our data, but, you know, it's pretty amazing what we can do with nothing. <laughs> so. Any other thoughts, feedback? Any burning desire? <laughs> you know what I was thinking about was um, that great resource we got from Cher um, when we did the, the peer training. Is is that something that's something I love to share? And I was um, I was wondering if anybody knows about it or it it's most of them are all it's on zoom or on phone but it's literally support groups or things i never even thought of 
that Libby and Billy from SHARE had added to our uh, educational packet. And anyone's, well, you know, it's just devoting your time and energy on Zoom. Do you know about that resource list that I'm talking about? A little bit. I think so, Debra. Yes, Carrie, thank you so much. Uh, great seeing you. And, you know, hopefully, you know, like Debra said, welcome to check us out, you know, our website. You know, share I some have. Yeah, <laughs> you, you know, self support groups. Yeah. And yeah. then our events, peace and suppress all the Once again, thank you so much. Thank for you. Sharing. You guys have a great day. You can take care. Sure. Thanks care. for all you do. So, yes, Debra. So, like, yes, like you mentioned, Libby is our trainer for the advanced peer specialist class. And uh, in that class, it includes uh, uh, three different sections. The first one is the peer kit, you know, training. The second one is the, uh, uh oh, I forgot the second one. I remember the third one is pre Bridget. I, I, I forgot the second one. Do you know the second one? <laughs> You are muted. If not, let me look it up really quick. Let me go on to my to my own website. Um, but uh, I was just saying that, like with that class in, in Libby's training class, she mentioned, um, of course, you know, like the, the peer kit that we used, like for us staff to use, like you know how to how to work through, you know, channel through with volunteers, newcomers, guests. And also it helps in my personal life too. to repair my relationship. It helps me repair my relationship with my mom. And then on top of it, you know, like I mentioned earlier, share, we have two peer run center here, you know, located in Cobra City and downtown. We have about seven, seven, eight different meeting rooms, different sizes. And so we host over 120 different support groups. And those support groups is free, and it, it and it runs by peers, meaning that people just like us, like right now, walk you know from different like uh, came come in from different walk of life. They can have different you know they they can be you know in profession with different profession in, you know outside of the group. However, once they go into that meeting room, it is just the name you know. Hey, I am Belle. You, Shannon, Deborah. Kathy, I don't, you know what, when I don't know how to say her last name, I'm just going to, Miss Rose, it's, I'm just going to It's Antonia. It's Antonia. Antonia. So it's just that we don't, you know, we like whatever that, you know, whatever the, you know, line of work that you're doing is not that important. We just want people to share, you know, your experience, what works for you. So that maybe it would inspire me, give me some insight. Hmm. So my way is not the only way. There's so many different ways, you know, like to help me think outside of my own box. So, you know, I hope that's what, you know, like uh, you would, you know, uh, hope that I have not, I did not, I have not got off the track again. So, but let me look at it, see the advanced peer special training that Libby does. Where is the website? That tells you how much, even though I work at freaking share i um uh, i need to get familiar with my own website my own web page because we just have a change it's a new setup because because we also we just now we're also doing the certified you know peer specialist mm -hmm. training and so it's a little bit different than so that is included, that is add on to our original. Well, not original. The how we start up the advanced peer special training. Because right now we're able to certify people. So we have to include that course into, you know, into the into the training. It's a wonderful course. Yes. So we also have another service that we also have here too is besides support support groups. We also like um, er earlier, Carrie was talking about. We also have a shared collaborative housing program service. Um, the benefits that going through us is that it's uh, they they're gonna be uh, it's in a uh, it's a residential home fully furnished. 
uh, it's very affordable. Uh, you know, they're gonna be it's gonna be two people per room. And the benefit is that they don't require first or last month security deposit. There is no background, no credit check. And it's month to month, meaning that if the person, you know, find something, you know, better or they need to move out, they are not tied down, they are not locked down in the lease. So they can, you know, they can they can go, you know, freely, you know. And also, you know, uh, with the share housing, you know, we also they're able to move in the same day, you know, if they are, if everything goes smoothly, meaning that, you know, always is the individual's choice. Do they want to live in that neighborhood or do they want are they okay with just one roommate? Some people prefer, no, I want to you have my own room. You know, which is also is is you know it's doable too. It depends on do we have that vacancy. So that kind of sums up you know what we do here at Share. Do you guys have any other questions? If not, this kind of sums up this session. You know, let's take a few minutes. If you guys have any thoughts, feedback, welcome, welcome. Because the next session will start at 3.15. We have a little time. I just want to say thank you for letting me be a part of this. Um, I have to run an errand, so I think I'm going to head out. But thank you so much, everybody, and I wish everyone the thank best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Take care. Bye.